Virtual machines. Virtual machines. Virtual machines. So, looking into virtual machine or virtual private server hosting providers that offer Alpine Linux, you would think would be a no-brainer. Like, how many providers offer Alpine Linux Docker containers? In any case, I went through a list of about, I don't know, maybe 25 or 30 different VPS hosts. And it, it's it's even a challenge to find information on VPS providers because there's there's two VPS sort of benchmark or comparison sites when you Google for VPS like comparisons you you can't really trust review sites because usually they are run by the VPS service providers or any well, web hosting is the same way so. It's a challenge to even find a list of VPS providers. And if you ask on like the um, well, certain websites that have groups related to VPS hosting, you can ask a very specific question about a very specific thing regarding VPSs, and you'll just get descended on by vultures who want <laughs> to tell you to buy their VPS. So it's it's a little bit of a challenge. So the information that I have found, I will be putting up on everybodycounts.org regarding Alpine Linux VMs. But some of the things that you run into besides what I just described is setup fees for a VPS. This should not exist. This is not like something that requires that should require any sort of effort to set up. This should be an automated system. I know that there were setup fees historically from setting up dedicated servers because that's an actual physical piece of hardware, particularly if it's like a custom dedicated server, then it will actually physically have to be built. So that's understandable if there is a setup fee for... Let me make sure that this is switched here appropriately so you can see the window. There we go. Yeah, so setup fees are understandable if it's in regards to physically setting up hardware. This should not exist for VPS provisioning. I can only imagine if there was a, a setup fee for a new email account, this fee should not exist. So anytime I see this, it's it automatically sort of rules it out for me. It, it, it's clearly like sort of a trap to try to get you to like, oh, well, I bought this VPS and I need another. Oh, well, do I want to go with another company? Because I might have to set up a pay for another setup fee so this is this fee is just garbage tier any anytime i see this i just will not use the provider when it comes to like a digital service basically this should be automated so the next thing i should probably talk about is this monthly price often you will see a price listed on the website but once you add the vps into a cart there will be a bunch of extra fees or the price that they will list is only if you purchase two years worth of hosting. If you only need it for a month, or if they're listing monthly prices, it should list the actual monthly price. So I don't have it flagged here, but it, it's very easy to find them. I, sh I should have on this particular set of data indicated if they did indeed change the fee once you put it in your cart or if you're only buying purchasing one month the reason that this only goes up to 21 or 20 is because there were a number that were in this category of sub five dollars you put it in the cart and then it's like 13 dollars so it's such a significant price hike for per month that is it, it's just ridiculous the other thing is when i'm looking for alpine linux hosting it's great if the host server is also running Alpine Linux, that would be ideal because it means globally you're just using less resources. There's less wasted energy than if you're running any other Linux distribution or operating system. So of these, I would like to contact the actual provider and ask them what their stack is. Like, is this hopefully not running on VMware? But if it is, I would, I would like to know that. The other thing is DDoS protection. If you get a VPS, it would be understandable Understandable about 20 years ago if DDoS protection was not included. Like for hosting, Cloudflare wasn't as big of a thing then, or CDNs in general were not as common as they are now. So if you are going with hosting, any sort of hosting, having DDoS protection as part of the offering by default with no extra fees 
is ideal. That is the sort of the best case scenario. That's what I would suggest aiming for when you're looking for web services. So anytime you see an extra fee, like does it make sense? to pay $10 a month for a $2.50 per month VPS or virtual machine, especially when there's, you know, for $3.88, you can get it. The only thing is they don't offer Alpine. I did once go with a VPS provider. It is listed here, VPS Dime. And this was for a game server. So not like anything major or, or, or mission critical for most things where there was network trouble I could see within their dashboard. So I contacted them regarding it and they just shut down all network access to the VPS, which I wasn't expecting. I thought they would have had some sort of mitigation on their set end, but they didn't. They just cut off all access. So that's one way to do things. They left it disconnected from the internet for hours, for hours. I want to say, I want to say between four and maybe 12 hours, they just left it disconnected. So that's why I wouldn't, I, I, I don't know how other providers' policies will be regarding DDoS, but if they don't offer DDoS protection, you might assume they're just going to bill you for that all, all that data and you're not going to have service during that period. So I don't recommend a hosting service that does not offer some sort of DDoS protection. So these are our sort of some op some things to consider. I mean, the location is another thing. What what you're getting for it is generally pretty similar. I mean, there there are some things that stand out, but not having, you know, the best performing Linux distribution is it's pretty disappointing, especially considering the options that they do offer. It, it seems like commonly there's Ubuntu, which is not good at performance, and it's a fork of Debian. It would make more sense to offer Debian, but even Debian is a poor performer. And then what's worse than that is when they're offering Alma Linux or Rocky Linux. Those perform terribly, and the software that they offer as part of their package management or that they bundle with is very old software. It's multiple years old, so I, I don't understand. I mean, I understand if they're trying to cut costs by not offering up-to-date systems. If your software is old, you don't have to maintain it. They're trying to cut costs in that way. So that's also another reason I would not want to go with a hosting provider that does not offer Alpine Linux. So when it comes down to it, there there are very few offerings. You know, there's this company, Vulture, but this DDoS protection as an additional fee that is so high is, is just, it's not worth it in my opinion. So then you have Linode, which is owned by Akamai. And my understanding is that every Thing went downhill after the Akamai purchase and I understand because Akamai's business model is based on a patent of for the most part DNS if you use DNS they can come after you but they're not going to come after you unless you're a CDN and your, your revenue is a certain amount and then their whole litigation side of the business powers up so is that behavior something you would want to invest in by using their service and then this is the last one that looks interesting and I think the only reason this isn't here is it's not listed Listed on their website plainly. This was probably the last one of the day that I was looking at yesterday before. I had some phone issues. I have a pretty common brand device cell phone and yesterday for whatever reason the battery in it ballooned up and actually pushed the display out of the case. <laughs> So the pillow has become spicy and it is ready to burn down something. I have a new Trogdor model phone. Anyways, I just wanted to uh, speak about these things because anyone who might be interested in working with operating systems or Linux systems to do whatever they choose, it's kind of just disappointing what options are available. I mean, there are free options, but then who knows what they're going to do with your data, you know? And, and any sort of service provider where they are going to use your data for advertising and language model training or other AI purposes, or, or, or they're just not privacy respecting in general, it's hard to recommend them. Even, I mean, I guess there's a reason that they have certain tiers, you know? So if there is a free tier Linux VPS that is privacy respecting, and the reason it's free is because it's subsidized from other customers, that would be cool. But I don't, I'm not aware of any. But if there are any, I would love to hear about them. In any case, whatever type you, of machine you use, whether it's virtual or not, there there's just factors that it would be great if they were broken down. And I guess I should speak briefly about the, the two options. There's a 
a VPS benchmarking website and a VPS comparison website. And they both, their business model is VPS providers pay them for advertising on those sites. So if you go through their lists, the information is outdated. So you can look at a plan and think, oh, this is great. And then go on their website and the plan doesn't exist anymore. Or if it does exist, the pricing is not the same or the specs are not the same or the company doesn't exist anymore. So those are a number of things to consider. I'm really thinking about if I should actually publish this data somewhere so that people don't have to suffer when it comes to researching hosting providers. The only thing is, I don't know what the business model would be for that (laughs) in a way that isn't clearly just there so that VPS providers will pay to be listed there in any sort of reasonable way. And if you happen to be looking for systems administrators or systems engineers, infrastructure engineers, operations engineers, coffee, Cheetos, chicken, a Linux person, or even someone to audit or review an environment, reach out to me. Anyways, I hope you're all having a fantastic open source autumn. See you next time.